Greetings, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in Hearts of Iron 4, but using a special mod in which we are going to be playing as the Ukrainian Hetmanat. Hetmanat. Cool. And we're going to leave historical AI focuses off, and like all, you know, beginnings of campaigns on my channel, here are the custom game rules, and pretty much everything's going to be set to, to default. So, what mod am I using? I am using... The Dreams of a White Russian Victory mod. Now, I know people have played this in the past. Some people have. But it was recommended I play this, or play using this mod. Especially the Ukraine. Most because of one of my, uh, Discord members requests. Who also manages it. Cool, anyways. Uh, so basically in this mod, in this timeline. White Russia between the Red Russia, you know, the Bolsheviks during the Russian Civil War. White Russia won the Civil War. And worked with other nations instead of taking them over. So that's why we have Ukraine here. We have the Republic of Belarus. We have Nationalist Finland. And China is very, very thick. This is a, a weird scenario where we're seeing a really unified China already. Very weird, I know. And we have Mo Mongolia there, of course, as well. So, with this focus tree, we, sh we shall see what we can do. So it's, it's quite a large focus tree. Um, as you can see, there's quite a few focuses to do. Uh, and we're going to get an event where either the... Hetman survives, or he's assassinated, which can make you go all down different paths. Republicanism, probably national populist. Wait, this is not Kaiserreich. Close enough. Uh, let's see. Cracks in the party solidarity, nationalism, internationalism for communism. You can have anarchism, you know, anarchy. And then you have the Ukrainian economy. You have an end to the Hetman, and then you have continue it if you wanted to. But the only thing we can really do <clears throat> is the breadbasket of Eastern Europe. During our time under the rule of the Russian Empire, we rightfully earned the reputation of being the empire's most important source of agriculture and food. In the present day, this still holds true, as we supply our Russian allies and other members of the Pact of Petrograd with vital food supplies. Finland has recently approached us to propose a new trade deal with them, promising great economic benefits. So we get better or more consumer goods or more civilian factories, and actually get some civilian factories. Great. We only start off with three research slots, but this mod is very... I would say Russian, Ukrainian, Belarusian specific or favored. And I mean that because eventually we can get a lot, or quite a few, research slots, which might be a bit OP, but you know, that's just me. Yeah. Just the number of research slots we get might be a bit much, but that's okay. We're going to focus a lot, a lot, on making at least a good amount of infantry. We might use light tanks, maybe, maybe not. I'm not really sure yet if I want to do that. Uh, let's see, we've got some ships. Obviously, we don't have that many. We have no capital ships. we got some subs. I'm going to put you... Uh, let's see. Yeah, it doesn't really matter. But you guys come over here, and you'll be under. That group. Go ahead and do that. And y'all train. And then you guys train as well. There we go. And we can set up our army real quick. Oh, yeah, also for our air force, we only have like 100 fighters. It is what it is. Now, with this, we have 22 infantry divisions, which are not bad. 18 combat width with support artillery, not too bad. And we have some 13 divisions of cavalry, which is. Eh, not great. If anything, I'm going to cut these down. Uh, do that. I'm going to keep four for now. And we have two tank divisions. There you go. Combine them together. Cut you. Uh, you know what? Let's make it five. Suck all. You all become infantry, that'd be good. Cut you down in half. There you go. Cool. And we'll probably use Unyielding Defender, Fast Planner. Uh, that's not really great. I don't. I really hate Old Guard. It hurts you so much. So, Volodymyr... Volodymyr Salsky. Hello, Volodymyr. If I'm pronouncing that right, I do not speak Ukrainian at all. But it is what it is. Over here, Aggressive Assaulter. Uh, I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna promote you to Field Marshal, just because... That's not bad. I like the aggressive assaulter. That's really good because you don't get that benefit if he's only a general, which really sucks. So instead, Andri Melnyak, which I've heard of before, I think. Oh, we don't get charismatic hand. We don't get that. That's okay. Most field marshals, all field marshals can get that trait. So, oh, why, Victor Klemenko? Klemenko, cool. Oh yeah, they already have infantry expert unlocked already. That's really nice. So we have our tanks and a few cavalry divisions, which is nice, which are very nice. Uh, Mountaineer. Uh, yeah, let's use you. Eventually, I'll probably use all, these all as tanks. Pablo Skoropatsky. Well, I'm not going to choose him because we probably might not have him later on, but that's just me. And how much is it going to cost to promote? Ooh, actually, not too bad. About 15. That's not too bad. 
go ahead and do this for now. So we, we, because we have a little bit of time, we gotta get through a couple focuses first. And then we're gonna get a tragic event in which someone might potentially get hurt, which would not be very cool. But let's finish the Hetman's Palace. Construction of a new palace for the Hetman has been underway since the beginning of 1935, and is now very close to completion. The gorgeous palace has been built to imitate the American White House and the Russians, uh, Russia's Kremlin. It will serve as both the home of the Hetman, as an, as an important center of our government's power. However, many of our people, most of whom live in poverty, are angry about the lavish funds spent to construct it. We lose stability, get some political power, which is good, because right now all we get is 0.19 a day. But we're going to keep losing more stability, so we're really not going to have any. So, my first choice... People usually don't like it when I do this, but since we're going to have it all game, I'm going to go with this other course, because you're going to go from like 0.15, because I played this a little bit off screen, to 0.4-ish, which is pretty good, I think, if I remember correctly. Regardless, I think that's really cool. Also, we can talk about the Navy. I'm not doing it yet. Let's see, over here. Ooh, uh, I'll get the focus going. Dude, why not first? Per persecute dis dissenters. It is an unfortunate reality that there are many of our fellow countrymen who despise and resist our government. None of these criminals are worse than the communists who continue to plague us. We've recently apprehended some of the criminals. Perhaps a dramatic s series of show trials will prove that we are not to be trifled with. Nothing instills respect like the hanging of, of brigades, of brigands. We lose ability. So over here, heavy ship hull, no cruisers. We already have Soblin. Um, you say Mikhail Soblin. Oh, it's not Valerie. It's not, of course, of course it wouldn't be Valerie Soblin, but, huh. Hmm. I don't know. Now you got me thinking. Soblin. Hmm. Anyways, we have early, an er, pre-Dreadnought Hole, which looks like it's before World War Two or even before World War One. So I'm going to say bye-bye to you. We're just going to use this. And if we can, we all upgrade. Actually, there's not too many upgrades we can actually put on this. Uh, I'll put you there, too. We have just enough for this. Is there any upgrades I can throw on here? Uh, we could make battle cruisers. You lower the armor. Uh, you do get a little bit more speed, which might be really beneficial. So we'll wait. I want to get. We'll use battle cruisers, and I almost I never like using level one of anything, but that's the only capital ship that we have, so that really hurts to see. That's like that. Oh, it's just so bad, so bad. I suppose technically we could improve worker conditions, but eh, we'll wait. I just want to get more raw army XP for raw. Political power first. That'd be good. That'd be very, very good. Uh, Pablo, Pablo, Pablo. Less stability. Oh, Chief Costco's down for a lot of things, but not for everything. Persecute dissenters. FBFL Hetman's Parade. Every year, celebration takes place in the capital, Kiev, to mark the independence of Ukraine and the creation of a Hetmanat. With a recent turmoil and dissent against the government, the Hetman is determined to make, his, make this parade even greater than the ones that came before. We must show our people the power and prosperity that the Cossacks bring to Ukraine. And Kiev, I think it's not Kiev, it's Kiev. I think, if I remember correctly, I can't remember. You get whole one infrastructure. And I do have a cup of coffee here to keep us nice and warm. It must get cold sometimes, because he's wearing a nice little hat. It must get cold down in in Ukraine. So, I don't know. What's the weather like down there? Like, I guess it really depends. Like, you could be up here in, like, Chernihiv. Or you could be, like, in modern-day Lviv. Lviv. Or you go all the way to Donetsk. Or Donbass. Ooh. Uh, Herson? Cool. Nice, and lots of planes. Prepare for the parade. Cool. A parade in Kiev. On April 29th, 1918, Hetman Pablo Skoropatsky took control of our fractured nation and successfully led us to a victory against the communist threat, which, with the help of the Russians and German allies, of course. Every year since then, we've held a parade to honor him and the Cossacks. This year, the spending will be higher than, uh, than ever before. We need a powerful display to keep our grip on power. Also, I have not introduced the national spirits yet. We have unpopular government, which really hurts. We have the Cossacks, which are content for now, which will, will be pissed off a little later. We have very little literacy. Even though minus 6% isn't very low, that's not that's not bad at all. That's really not bad. Agricultural economy hurts our construction speed, which I don't like. It gives us more consumer goods factories and multi-population. And then we have a communist threat, which is obviously not very good. But that's just me. Very, very good. All right. Let's go ahead and promote our... Guy we want. Konstantin Presovsky. Cool. And there you go. He's good for infantry leader. He's leading... My apologies. I cannot speak so far in this video. Uh, he's an infantry leader, which gives him more defense. But he's also an aggressive assaulter, which is very, very important. Because he gives you more breakthrough. And I love breakthrough so much. Get more offensive doctrine. He's a guy that's going to have to break through everything here. So... Uh, the Hetman's Parade. The time has come for the annual celebration of Ukraine's independence and the creation of the Hetmanat. 
Hetman and his government have spared at no expense preparing a lavish parade showing off Ukraine's economic and military might. Unfortunately, the plight of the common man in terms of the economy seems to have been lost on officials and has turned out to be a counterproductive event. While many in the pro-Cossack neighborhoods of Kiev cheer on the soldiers and performers as they pass, many streets are eerily quiet and empty, with only the music of the marching bands breaking the silence. The turnout for the parade has been even worse than last year's. On a rooftop adjacent to one of the near abandoned streets, a lone man with a rifle prepares, double checking the condition of his weapon and its optics. He wishes to also to partake in the festivities, showing off a performance of his own. The soldiers round the corner and begin marching down the street in union, and they're followed by the first marching band. Finally, he sees his target as a streetcar carrying the Hetman and his wife come into view. He sets his sights on the fo Hetman's forehead, releasing his breath and refrain refrains from taking in another, allowing his sense and arms remain steady. After what feels like an eternity, he squeezes the trigger and the crack of his rifle echoes down the street. It's a difficult shot to make, though not the most challenging the shooters ever face. Still, mistakes happen, and event even the greatest sniper can miss. So, it's the Hetman's wife, the poor wife, or the Hetman is slain. Uh, ooh, unpopular government remove all this stuff. Chaos, strife, and disorder. So, this literally determines what path we will take. If he survives, you can go down with continue the Hetmanat, or you can do an end and get a crate. A kingdom or the direct threat seizes control, or you can go down the other path, which we already kind of talked about republicanism, uh, fascism, or yeah, fascism, and anarchy, and stuff like that. But we're gonna go with the poor wife. She got hit. Sorry, wife. The Hetman survives. The Hetman has miraculously survived the assassination attempt on his life, but all is not well. His wife died. The Hetman is so overcome with grief at the murder of his wife and has lost all focus on governing and keeping order. Now, a power struggle has ensued between the Cossacks and the military elements that wish to usurp them. Will the Hetman snap out of it, or will the Cossacks finally lose a grasp, grasp on power? So currently we have 0.11 a day, and if I go here, we get 0 0.4, like I said earlier. That's not bad. And even though it's, is it really worth 150 political power getting this, getting this guy? It's worth it if you use it all game, which, at least for me, that's how I like to play. I like getting a lot of PP or political power, so that's really nice. Get some dispersed industry. I know a lot of people don't like it, but... We, basically, we just basically got 0.3 more a day, so that's really cool, for, in my opinion. I could do I could go crazy and get Dimitro Donsov and get even slightly more political power and get more stability, but we're probably not. We could do financial advisor, which would be, or financial expert, which is pretty good. Maria Nikiforova. Huh. Propaganda minister? Or master? A royal wedding in Brazil. Oh. Cool. <coughs> Excuse me, I had to sneeze. Oh, that's not bad, too. We probably get Ludwig von. Mrs. Mices? And Stepan Timoshenko. Timoshenko sounds kind of familiar. Hmm. Elusive gentleman is always good to get. We, of course, do need to get Semen Herzl? Semen? We need to get Semen. That is something you'll probably never hear me say again. Konstantin Przovsky. Cool. Look at all that political power we get now. So much political power. And. The eternal power struggle. The Hetman has survived an attempt on his life, but the brutal loss of his wife has left him temporarily grief-stricken and politically useless. While the government officials belonging to the Cossacks bloc struggle to keep their grip on power, elements of the military have long chafed under the rule that have begun seizing the opportunity. Physical fights break out in the officers' mess halls and ministerial chambers alike. If Hetman does not snap, snap out of it soon, the status quo of Cossack domination may very well come to an end. He shall abdicate and retire from political life so we can do an end to the Hetmanat. In a surprise turn of events, the Hatman and his Cossacks have been ousted in a bloodless coup led by Alexander Perkov and the Hatman's own son, Daniel Skoropatsky. The Hatman has retired from public life to grief, while Daniel's monarchists and Hekrov's army officers now turn their sights on each other. Only one faction will emerge as a new government of Ukraine. Oh boy. So now the Cossacks are pissed off. Cool. Very cool. Ooh, Construction 1. I like Construction 1. Uh, I'm going to go for Field Soldier immediately, because we are probably going to need to get some refineries. We might be able to trade Romania, or trade with Romania, eventually, for fuel, but you never know. You never know. Yeah, using level 1 stuff. I don't really like lowering their armor, but I want speedy ships. We need speedy ships here. That would be very, very important. Cool. Yeah, Alright, any other technology getting done soon? Maybe a little bit. And we are about halfway through through the end of the Hetmanat, which is really cool. So yeah, with this mod, at least the path we're taking, it's cool that we can we can industrialize pretty quickly, because we only have 23 factories. That's it, 23 factories. I mean, it's 36, so I mean, I don't expect us to become an, an, an industrial juggernaut. Wow, National Spain, what is... Wow. Um... Didn't the Civil War just start? 
That is not looking very good. <laughs> uh, if they lose that port, they're done or down there. Oof. That does not look good for them. Yeah, but we can't get up to see Mr. Seaman or Constantine because we need to modernize the army or bring reforms to the Cossacks. So. The nation's next steps. Without strong leadership, I'm bowing to ever-increasing pressure upon them. The Cossack block has collapsed, and the power vacuum has been quickly filled by the Ukrainian military. The Cossacks are certainly angry about this turn of events, but being a minority in politics, they are powerless to stop them. Now factions within the military have broken out into spats of infighting, with most siding with one or two of the largest factions, those that wish to create a Ukrainian monarchy, and those in favor of a return to the Directory. The monarchist faction is led by none other than Hetman's son, Daniel... Danilo Skoropatsky. His followers wish to install him as the nation's first king since the days of the Kievan Rus. Kievan Rus, setting his noble and historically popular family and his excellent relationship with the powerful Ukrainians, though there is some disagreement about what type of monarchy Ukraine should have. Forming a constitutional monarchy will be a popular option, as well as entice many advocates of democracy to join in the faction, but many distance some of the but may distance some of the military officers who are more in favor of an absolute monarchy. This will be left likely up to Danilo to decide, assuming his faction wins out. Of course, there are those who wish to reform the Directorate of Ukraine. The Directorate was essentially a placeholder for a democratic form of government, its formation only meant to be temporary while the Russian Civil War raged on. However, this oligarchic form of government has broad appeal amongst the military, as it would allow them to create a military junta of sorts. This faction is led by the very popular marshal Alexander Herkov. Ultimately, it is very much up in the air which faction will emerge with complete control of the country. Luckily, the debates are far less violent than those with the Cossacks. It seems very likely that the losing faction will still be willing to support the other. Monarchism? Our directorate is reformed. Ooh, non-aligned. Hero of the Civil War. That's not too bad. We're gonna go with monarchism. So, an absolute or constitutional monarchy. The monarchist faction has emerged as the final victor of the power struggle in the government, defeating both the Cossacks and the supporters of the directory. Now comes to answer a very important question. Will the leader serve as an absolute or constitutional monarch? So, you can be known as the Kingdom of Ukraine. You'll be known as the Kingdom of Ukraine. It's either the SPD, or if you do constitutional monarchy, or you become non-aligned. So the SPD are the like the democratic persons. And Simon, 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 Petulia. So here's the thing. We went down uh, this path. So actually, we can read this right now. Uh, with the backing of the key military officers, Dan Skortopatsky, D. Skortopatsky, has ascended to the throne and taken the regnal name of Dan Danilo I. Not since the days of Kievan Rus has there been there anything resembling a Ukrainian monarchy within, with a Ukrainian king at its helm. This marks the beginning of a new age for Ukraine and hopefully the beginning of a peaceful and stable region. Cool. So, we have that. We can do a royal dictatorship which we get stability, a research slot, and remove the low literacy. Get rid of the Cossacks and their pissed off nature. Remove the communist threat. And we get 1% more population, which I like. <clears throat> or we get a prime minister and embrace secu secularity. We get another research slot. Invite Cossacks into the government. You remove communist threat as well. But then you get economic reforms. Really, it's between economic reforms and a 1% population. Where we're going, I want to be safe. And I want to get some population. Because we're gonna, we're probably going to need that. So we went with the royal dictatorship. Because <clears throat> the Ukraine does not have unlimited manpower. And every man is precious. So we actually should probably research some field hospitals too. And my goodness, we need some guns. Whew, we need some guns, man. You know what, right now let's go and improve working conditions. We could get, use more stability. Even though, minus 20%, <clears throat> minus 10%, so a 30, that's minus 30% right now. So basically we'll get 30 more percent, so really we need 39% more stability in total, which we might get our former focuses, actually. Um, so there's 15, so now we only need 24 more percent to get to 100. 24%, 24%, 24%. So, I mean, we'll get there eventually. It's not going to be that bad, so. Oh, you get more population with a legacy of the Kievan Rus. And more stability. Worse, uh, plus 20% percent war support. That's a lot. And we create the faction, the Black Sea Alliance. Maybe we'll be able to invite Finland, the Turks. We'll see what happens. Now, I left it on... Uh, ooh, we could use that. Uh, yeah, why not? Just in case. Um, I left this on a historical because I don't know what's going to happen. I tried this on historical... And, they, and Russia went democratic? Oh boy. Economy in ruins. Agrarian society. Poor education system. Communist insurgency. Vokrana. This isn't working. I've not checked out the Russian focus tree. It is... Oh, President Kerensky. Oh. As you can see, it's it's a little large. <laughs> uh, this isn't working. Tsaritsyn. Oh. Well, we don't. they have not chosen which path they're going to go down yet, so... We'll see what happens. So, let's go and do world dictatorship. Actually, can we do the economy yet? We can do the economy. 
It's not bad, but I'm going to get through this as fast as possible. Royal dictatorship. Our king does not need the political meddling and machinations of ministers and advisors. His wisdom, courage, and leadership will lead us safely through any trials we may face. Only King Daniel can protect the people from the divisive actions of radicals and liberals and unify all Ukrainians. A pure absolute monarchy is the best path for Ukraine. Well, we'll see what happens. I do want to get to early mobilization, but we need more war support. We did 53% stability. That's not bad. Uh, over here... How is our factories doing? You know what? Mm, I want to get more political power, but eventually we'll get enough, I think. Hmm. Uh, actually, how many are we losing? Well, we are at... Spec 34%. Uh, editor, I really... I want to get more, but it's only 5%. Uh, let's see, operatives would be nice. You know what? Let's do that one. Maybe it didn't really help us out too much. Uh, maybe we got one, maybe. <clears throat> That's okay, because the next one we're going to choose is probably... Because I want to build up a lot. Captain of Industry. I want to build, 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 because we are going to be building like crazy in this campaign, this mod. So, And we're still... Ooh, we're still being... Oh, well, I guess it just finished. Just finished. That's fine. Keep making the destroyers, even though we want the heavy ship hull. So, yeah. And Belarus. I have not taken a look at Belarus, the Republic of Belarus, yet. Okay, they have a generic focus tree. I thought they had a unique one. That's okay. That's okay. Mechanical computing, very nice. Disperse industry, grab some reinforce rate, radio, and... Ooh, let's get some motorized. Oh, we don't have motorized yet. Oh my goodness, that is not ideal. 0.91 is not bad. Actually, it's lowered by the angered Cossacks and the unpopular government, which is fine. Things happen. Things happen. Yeah, Cossacks. If you want to read that, go right ahead. Control of Ukraine has been usurped from the Cossacks. They're extremely hostile and resistant to the current government. And we're still in the Pact of Petrograd. And we get more daily unaligned support. I really don't like it. I don't like unaligned. Because it's just a catch-all term for everyone who's not either either fascist, communist, or democratic. Which I, I really don't agree with. Because you're limited. Because you can't... What? You can't get to extensive conscription? Well, I guess technically you can eventually, but over here you can't even get to war economy <clears throat> without having more than 50% war support, fascist or communist. It just, I don't know, it limits you. I really don't like how it limits you. Now we can draft a constitution, which might not be bad, but we leave the Pact, Pact of Petrograd, which I don't want to do yet. I do want to get this focus, this extra research slot, I mean, really quickly, so we're going to do that. Suppress the Cossack unrest. It's disappointing to see that those that once included the king amongst the ranks now resist him so fiercely. The Cossacks are merely the fragmented remains of the past, and that is where they belong. In the past, if they will not willingly support the path our king has begun taking Ukraine down, then they must be eliminated. Arresting key leaders of the movement should end their rebellion. Wow, we got a lot of uh, political power. Let's go ahead and grab you, because I am going to build a lot. 24th. It doesn't look great right now. But it will be eventually. Trust me. So, removing contact arrest, we'll get 10% more political power. 10% more war support, which will be very handy, actually. So we can actually go up to early mobilization. Even though, we should probably focus on trying to get 25% more war support. I probably... Oh, I can't lower this either. Oh. Oh, that sucks. And you're getting close to done. Uh, on Christmas Eve, we'll be able to be done with that, which is fine. And we're slowly getting rid of our artillery deficit, which is nice. Which is very, very nice. Even though I want to make six divisions, you're on low, you're on high. That's good. Mm hmm. We're going to need a large, large army for what we're going to need here. The Kingdom of Finland. Oh, Finnish king? How silly. So what is the path for Finland like? That is an interesting flag. Gustav V. Oh, they're guaranteed by Sweden. Wait, hold on. Gustav, you're leading both. Hold on. You have generic focus tree, which I guess makes sense. Resource exploitation. Oh. Okay. Russian trade profiteering at the top. Strengthen the army. Riots in the southern cities. Republican riots. Memories of the Civil War. So... Crown the father of our nation. Crush the riots. Monarchy question. Invite the House of Hess. Oh. Aristocratic Nazi. Unification. They get unification with Sweden. That looks like fun. Oh my goodness. Take on the Western threat. This looks really cool. There's so many options in this. You get Finnish industrialization, a rivalry, Finnish navy, air force. Yeah. I'm, oh, the United Kingdom of Sweden, Finland, return to the Swedish Empire. That looks awesome. Ooh. Cool. But we must continue. And 
On with that, so Orthodox support. The Orthodox religion is one of the cornerstones of our society, and the church must have a distinguished role in government. The use of divine mandate will go a long way towards unifying the nation and legitimizing the new monarchy. Only with a strong sense of faith can our fledgling nation survive the dark times that are ahead for Europe. Divine mandate? You mean like a divine mandate that might be in a different mod called TNO, like over here? Oh boy, what happened? Is there a Russian military junta still? Oh, they're going Empire or Oh. Okay. Well, they're going to bring back the Tsar. So they need the Romanov dynasty under Mikhail? It looks kind of familiar. Hmm. Is that Mikhail? No, it's Vladimir. Is that Vladimir? That should be Vladimir. Yeah, it says Vladimir Romanov is current leader. Or new dynasty. Uh, every time I see his face, it reminds me of the time I played as Vyatka. And, uh... Oh, I guess they're going down this path. Uh, but as I played as Vyatka in TNL the last days of Europe, which was a lot of fun. That was my first campaign in TNL. Ah. Uh, I love that mod. A new Russian Tsar. Well, they're still better than the Bolsheviks, I guess. Vladimir Romanov. Alright, cool. Reunification. Oh, boy. We better prepare for war ourselves, then, because that's not going to look good. War with it. Oh, Kievan Light. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Conquer the Baltics. Oh, boy. Integrate new territories. Integrate new territories. Oh, my goodness. We love the Tsar. Oh, God. Loses authoritarian imperialist and gets beloved imperialist. Imperialism is okay, as long as your people love you. That's all that matters. Uh, we, ooh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to save it. We, 4% off. We just need a little bit more war support. Which, Orthodox doesn't really help us out with that, but whatever. Uh, industrial, industrial. I might focus quite a bit on, on uh, synthetic resource research. Yeah, but I'm going to go with KBP first, because we're always going to need to research new equipment, better equipment, stuff like that, so. And we got that. Great. I'm immediately going to go ahead and grab this, though. State funded Orthodox schools, uh, gradually remove the low literacy rate, and a good research slot. So, to address the literacy issue in our nation, King Danilo has begun working with the Ukrainian Orthodox Church to develop future plans for their population's education. Religious schools are already one of the most prevalent ways to achieve an education in our country, so it makes sense to put extra funding into this method. Our children will learn science and proper morals at the same time. Great. Great, 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 great. You know what I like, I like about this? Focus trees and all these focus trees. They're not 70 day focuses, because 70 day focuses, I, I don't know, just. After you, you play Kaiserreich, Old World Blues, you play even TNO, T Thousand Week Reich, and sometimes Fear Reich, sometimes. And go back to base game, like Ho Vanilla Hoi 4. 70 day focuses. Oh my gosh, those just take full Alva. And we can only get 1.22 political power day, which is nice, but it's just too long. It's, it just it just hurts when you do it like that. But it is 37. Let's grab some more. Let's get some more output. We still, we still need more guns. And we just got out of our deficit of artillery. Yeah, we're going to need a lot of guns. And we don't even have 20 combo with divisions yet. I want to do Promises of Peace because I need that. Oh, you know, I don't want to do that because I need more. Weekly War Support goes down by 1%. Ah! Oh. Anarchist Uprising in the Spanish Civil War. Well, National Spain is definitely looking better. This is on historical, so no wonder they, National Spain didn't get whatever they wanted. Actually, this since this is on historical developed colonies, which way are you going, France? We're not really sure. Uh... New national focus. Ah, we figured out how to use trucks. Yay! <laughs> trucks time. Construction too. Yes, please. Uh, Germany, you're probably going to go with Mr. Schmidtler. Probably. You sent volunteers of them. That's cool. Hold on. So with that... Oh, that's really nice. Actually, really, 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 really nice. And we get a fourth research slot. Uh, but that's not the end of them. We can get more. Draft a new constitution. Unpopular government. Uh, we're going to do that next so we can get to early mobilization. So, with the most urgent questions surrounding the new monarchy having been addressed, it's time to drop a new constitution that will determine how we shall govern the nation. Whether this will have an absolute or constitutional monarchy, this is an important and necessary step. We're surrounded by potential enemies, and our constitution will act as a shield against them and political radicals. And we lose, or we leave, the Pact of Petrograd, which is okay in my mind, because eventually we're going to duke it out with these guys anyways. Russia, though, oh, they're doing the Russian army. They, Finland has already left, which is fine. Mongolia is in it, as well as Belarus, but we'll see what happens with these, because since they don't have a focus tree, led by Vasil Zacharka. Cool. Yeah, they have pretty much double our manpower, more than double the factory amount, and, uh, well, fuel, we can't even compete. And we have less than half the convoys. Uh, that's a lot of divisions. That's so many divisions. Oh, Mexico is having a civil war. Cool. Yeah, but of course, their navy's not that great, but still. 
They can't even get into the Black Sea, so maybe we might be able to contest the Russians in the Black Sea, and they have a much bigger air force than us. Which is to be expected, of course. Upgrade tactical bombers. Yes, do that. Do not worry about what we are doing down here. Um, usually, I, I want to say this for last because I do want to do Royal Armed Services. I want to end the communist threat with force. But then I'm going to focus very hard in the next episode on the Ukrainian economy. I can ignore the Air Force for now and the Navy to a degree. Especially the Navy. But I do need to do this one. We can modernize the Army and get daily Army XP. That's actually... Mm, I need that. I, we really need that. Population will probably... Oh, I might just go superior firepower. I mean, that's just so good, you know. Let's go and grab some improved machine tools. That'd be good. We're going to get the political power. Actually, we're going to mandatory literacy. Oh, after 2 to 40 days, I'm going to wait for this to finish first. And then we're going to go straight to partial mobilization. That'll be good. Cool. Very, very good. 7, 8. Nice. Let's do that immediately. So we have 15, and then we get two more. Not bad, but we get improvement to building stuff up. And we could do that. I oh, Population's nice. I'd like to remove that. We definitely need to get some more daily army XP. You know, I'm going to leave it up to you guys. As I just want to ask you guys, should I focus a little bit more on tanks? Or should I focus more on having a great infantry army? Because I do want to use light tanks at least a little bit, just for maybe a few breakthrough things. But I want to make sure that our infantry are top quality. So that will determine whether I go down mobile warfare, which is not terrible for infantry. It's not great, but not terrible. Or should I go with superior firepower? Because that's tried and true. It's still probably the best. It's not extremely, extremely great, but still pretty much the best in my opinion. That or mobile warfare. I'll let you guys decide because I like both. I really like both. Grand Battle Plan is okay. It has its uses, but for us, not really. So I'll let you guys decide whether I should emphasize tanks a lot more. Or should I focus just on having a really, really good infantry army? Regardless of the choice, I will still be using tanks a little bit. But how much I will use them will determine on your guys' choice. But let's do the Ukrainian economy first. The economy of Ukraine is almost entirely agricultural, with industrialization being near, nearly non-existent. Horses are still used to plow fields, and many such items as rifles, automobiles, and consumer goods need to be imported from Russia and Germany. Most of our nation's wealth is concentrated in the hands of the noblemen and large landowners, while the common people live in near abject poverty. That is not good. Really, really, really not good. And obviously, once World War II breaks out, ooh, there goes National Spain, declared war on Spain. Carlos Uprising, oh, that's cool. Uh, anyone in Eastern Europe will probably won't come to say Poland, which means actually we're going to face probably a pretty strong Germany. Yeah, ooh. Actually, how does this, how does Germany react if they do want to do Operation Barbarossa? Uh, let's see. Lublania War, Fed Czechoslovakia, Maginot, uh, Assert Eastern Claims, with Vesebung. I'm not really sure. Where is that? Oh, war with... Oh, war with Russia. Okay, so it's just Russia, then. Plus 25% attack. And tw against us... Oh, my gosh. For half a year. But friend Turkey... Puppet Turkey. Yeah, well, at the time of this recording, Turkey will get an updated focus tree if you pay for it. There will be a new DLC for Turkey, Greece, and Bulgaria, which is interesting. Hoping they get something. Oh, and we have new decisions. Ukrainian economy. Cool. And let's finish off this episode with something else. Actually... We can't go down there because we got to do that one, which is fine. Uh, we get even more war support. Black Sea Alliance, that's not bad. But we got to focus on this stuff. Now, on this right side here, it's okay. You get bonuses, like maybe some more resources, some bonuses to synthetic resources. You get refineries, period. That's cool. Uh, get some oil, which we'll need. We need all this stuff later on, but we can kind of ignore that for now because you can get some military factories. You can get some infrastructure. You can get some civilian factories. And you get another research slot. So there's another research slot we can get. Or we can focus now on agriculture or industrialization. So this focus will unlock further decisions to industrialize our economy or our nation. Pursuing industrialization will cost political power and take longer to reap the benefits than if we pursue agriculture. But the benefits overall are greater. So we can focus on agriculture, less consumer goods, more daily political power, more population stability. But we're going to begin industrialization just because it's definitely going to help us out in the long run and i want a very strong industrialized ukraine today we set out on the greatest endeavor ukraine has ever attempted the mass rapid mass industrialization of our nation the coming changes will be extremely difficult to accomplish and adjust to but if we succeed ukraine will truly be a major player in europe and we will become an economic force to be reckoned with commence the ukrainian industrial revolution and today we shall end now the, the episode if you enjoyed the episode consider leaving a like subscribe if you're new check out my discord link in the description below and i'll see you tomorrow when we see who might win the Spanish Civil War, and we'll figure out whether we want to go down mobile warfare and use 
put a lot more emphasis on tanks or use superior firepower and really, really emphasize our infantry. Regardless, thank you very much for watching and have a great rest of your day.